Welcome to Revival Time Hub. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. We bless you. Mighty God, Shaba Sobranda Gala Supra Haskidiata. From everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Bless him. Bless him in the spirit. Bless him in your own way. But let it be from the depth of your heart. Lord, we thank you. Now ask him for an encounter tonight. Father, an encounter that transforms my life. An encounter that will shift me to a higher spiritual plane. Is someone praying? For everyone that asketh, receiveth. Satisfy the longing of my heart tonight. Let your word come with fire. Let it transform. Let it heal. Let it deliver. Let it lift. Let it impart. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your Son and leaving your Spirit till your work on earth is done. We thank you, oh my Father, for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till your work on earth. Father, we bless you and we honor you again. We have come tonight, visit us in a tangible way. Lift burdens, give us various kinds of encounters. And to Jesus be all the praise and the glory. For in Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. good to have every one of us here again the Bible says they go from strength to strength as many as appear before the Lord in Zion and to all our men happy Father's Day in the name of Jesus in my world an adult is from 13 years the moment you have the intelligence to hear and understand and take decisions and encounter with consciousness the consequences that come whether positively or negatively you are an adult it's as simple and as honest as that sometimes we allow room for a lot of irresponsibility by allowing a lot of grown people believe they are still children and so we have several people making decisions whether wise or foolish consciously anyone who is able who has attained a, an age and a stage of discretion where they can make decisions consciously aware being aware of the consequences that follow whether good or bad in my world that is an adult if you attain that at the age of seven congratulations for being an adult early but i think that one of the things we must trust god for is the grace to let adults know they are adults so that we minimize a lot of irresponsibility that continues to plague our society and so to all the men 
congratulations Ephesians chapter 6 is fair and honest to at least say a word to the men most times men are remembered for the troubles they create and when we do what is right it is swept under the carpet Ephesians 6 the first nine verses talk about several instructions but then let's just read the first three it says children obey your parents in the Lord for this is right verse 2 is very powerful it says honor thy father and mother my concern tonight is the father which is the first commandment with promise what is the promise verse 3 that it may be well with thee and that thou mayest live long on earth this right here as simple as it is explains why many young people live a very hard life among the many reasons why people experience unnecessary battles in their lives is because of an attitude sadly that has become institutional now an attitude of dishonor particularly to parents fathers both spiritual and biological I hope that tonight will remind us again that honor carries untold blessings and rebellion carries untold curses and consequences hallelujah every one of us we all desire that we live meaningful lives and that it is well with us you don't want to live long in a life full of misery it's one thing to contend for long life but you want it to be well with you whilst you live long hallelujah and so honor to every father honor to every elder honor to every man thank you for your resilience thank you for your commitment for those who have been doing well may God grant you the grace to continue doing more for those who have not stood up to their responsibilities in the name of Jesus may today be a reminder that God is watching you and he's counting on you and that there is still room to repent adjust and become that responsible father we cannot say congratulations to irresponsibility congratulations has to match responsibility and the hallmark of fatherhood is not having children the hallmark of fatherhood is the ability to be responsible comes from the word responsive hallelujah praise the name of the Lord so we thank God for that and the Lord will bless us in Jesus name just two very quick um, functions and then we'll get to the word everyone is welcome as always our global family may the Lord bless you in Jesus name it's my joy to just acknowledge tonight his excellency um, Mike Jaktani one of the presidential candidates from Gabon is he here God bless you let's honor him and his entourage God bless you sir thank you you're most welcome thank you so very much the Lord will do you good this is koinonia in Jesus name hallelujah um, and then to thank you again for really responding to the announcement last week I did say that a global family we are trying to um, collate a lot of data and I did request that from across the globe do let us know where you are connecting from using the hashtag hashtag koinonia global and then your location thank you very much for the so many thousands across the globe who have helped us on that and we still want to request that you do that again for those of you who are yet to respond on that wise we have one more week so you can do well just hashtag and let us know your region whether you're in london houston kenya as is written there you know even within nigeria here it's still fine even though our focus is for our family in diaspora praise the name of the lord and as you do so the lord will bless you you can use any of our social media platforms the media department is working hard to collate this and it will help and guide us um, in jesus name 
the next is a very personal one by god's grace um i usually would have broadcasts during my birthday this is the the high point for me and um by the privilege of god's grace my birthday broadcast will be coming this saturday this saturday 25th june thank you by 10 30 on the dot would start and um, worship should start and then we'll just pick it up from there it's very important it's usually an opportunity for me not, not just to celebrate my birthday but to have to be able to speak to our global family and then to the body of christ there is always a burden that god puts in my heart june is a very significant and strategic month for me not just because of my birthday one of the things you must learn is you must discern the operation of the holy spirit in your life god is not doing the same thing every time you, there are seasons where god has chosen by his predeterminate counsel to visit you to unveil chapters of your destiny is your assignment to walk in partnership with the holy spirit and to discern those moments so it's usually a period of spiritual emphasis for me and so please connect all of us here and our global family unfortunately um, we may only allow the workers to be physically present because we are using one of the halls here hall one so it can only take about 700 people or thereabouts so that can only take the workforce maybe just with one or two exceptions i'm sure that for all workers your heads of department will reach you on that wise but to let us know that it is saturday the 25th of june by 10 30 on the dot west african time the worship should begin and then latest by 11 i should come up and please do well to inform everyone it is everything that concerns the ministry concerns everyone who is connected to the vision our social media platforms will be up and running to capture this broadcast especially our youtube channel so please do well to make sure that you are hooked on to koinonia global i do not know um, how many other uh, probably television stations or channels will be connected but we'll do well to make sure that we get it as far as possible and let's hear what god would have for us in the name of jesus thank you very much um finally just to encourage us to please take the time to listen to these teachings you hear several people come to share testimonies here and they will tell you that the holy spirit led me or an individual led me to a message and i sat down listen the way to lasting results is to stay with god until light from his word comes into your spirit god is not a herbalist he does not practice divination are we together prophetically you can receive short-term results by the extension of god's mercy but every time you want to obtain lasting results please do not allow the devil deceive you to just play games and play pranks with your destiny there is by the grace of god at least one teaching audio or video that should be able to speak to any challenge or any issue of concern hallelujah i will submit to you respectfully speaking that many believers are lazy just because of the advantage of things like favor mercy the ministry of the holy spirit we have allowed it and and we preachers sometimes I say we including myself we need to be careful how we mentor believers so that in a bit to help them know the truth we do not culture a life of spiritual irresponsibility it will always be man in partnership with God to make anything happen hallelujah there are many believers who have several requests several issues and you ask them have you taken any time to stay with God and to come even for one day with a strategic message that speaks to that issue for many if they are sincere the answer is no we live in a world 
of fast everything sharp sharp we want it to happen now sharp sharp anointing sharp sharp whatever except god is a god of speed but god does not rush people he said martha martha you are worried and upset about many things but one thing is needful and mary has chosen to sit all those who ate bread at jesus's crusade were first made to sit down he said let them see. if you are too big or too in a hurry to sit down then you will not have bread those who ate the bread and fish were those who were patient enough to sit down hallelujah when i find a subject that addresses an area or resources that address areas of ignorance in my life or limited knowledge I can listen to one hour a one hour message for three days sincerely i will pause after 15 minutes and pray in tongues and ask the spirit of god to reveal to me and sometimes you can even have more light even than the preacher because of your hunger hallelujah I love you sincerely from the depth of my heart and I desire to see everyone grow and attain stature in the spirit. There is one thing I will tell you. A life of spiritual irresponsibility will never translate to constructive maturity. My assignment is to help. My assignment is to teach. My assignment is to guide and to mentor. And this is a covenant I will do it with all my heart and for as long as I live. But every one of us under the sound of my voice and then speaking to our global family, we must be prepared to take responsibility. I consider any believer an unserious believer if there are many life-threatening issues around your life and then you are not sourcing for the spiritual resources that can bail you out. It is amazing how many believers continue to play games with their life and then when you look at their lives you find out that absolutely nothing is working spiritually they are down prayer life down as far as spiritual intelligence is concerned zero or f are we together financially they are broke they are suffering no favor nobody helps them even their loved ones how could you be at ease under that kind of condition listen Take it as a project to identify areas of spiritual ignorance and deal with it until light comes. Hallelujah. If you are doing well spiritually and you're not excelling in the area of say leadership and administration, zoom your attention to that area and learn. Everything is within reach if you have the humility to discern and the patience to learn. There are, listen, for most of the resources that make for an excelling life, money is hardly a tool that you would need to get them in our world today. You would need to use another kind of currency like honor, like meekness, like patience, like hunger. These are all currencies. The Bible says, buy the truth. Hallelujah. So please let me encourage us. There are many people who are tapping into this, this frequency of spiritual seriousness and you see that the testimonies are showing. But there are many others who are still giving flimsy excuses and hoping that superstitiously or magically the Holy Spirit will just exempt them from the woes that are scheduled in and to any life that does not take God seriously. It's a risk to be passive and careless and nonchalant, not in today's world. Hallelujah. So please obtain grace. Obtain grace. Thank God for the area that is working, but focus on the area that is not working and say, Lord, grant me grace. Let by your light, let me see light. What is it about these finances that it seems to stare me at the face? I am a man of God or I'm a businessman or I'm a father and I'm unable to take care of my family. I'm tired of the shame and the reproach that comes from spiritual ignorance. Rather than just blaming demons, even if demons are to be blamed, what do you do? Do you sit back there and just say, okay, demons are to be blamed? Hallelujah. I think we should pray one minute. 
ask the Lord for grace to be serious please cry from the depth of your heart Lord thank you for helping me so far but I take full responsibility over my destiny I confess ignorance in this area and in that area and I am determined like a responsible believer to take advantage of the resources that you have placed within my reach and contend for light someone is praying someone is praying I obtain grace let my life begin to produce results consistent results that bring glory to the name of the Lord for in Jesus name I pray tonight's message will transform your life in a very mighty way I'm here tonight to fulfill a promise I made I promised that I was going to do a very powerful teaching um, and that I will reserve that teaching for our Father's Day and today is that day so this is a message that applies to everyone but then I'm dedicating it specially to all our men and all our fathers May the Lord grant us grace in the name of Jesus redefining inheritance redefining inheritance please write it down and let's pay attention as the Holy Spirit speaks to us redefining inheritance all across the globe every time especially an elderly man a father especially one who uh, has the privilege of being blessed in his lifetime when there is any transition after a period of mourning and crying then comes the next trouble the issue of managing the estate or managing what we call the inheritance and um, it has gone so bad unfortunately in our world today that children actually sit down and wish and pray and hope and even sponsor the transition of their loved ones in hope to accelerate their accessing what we know and what we call to be inheritance and I've studied the subject of posterity I've studied the subject of continuity I've studied the subject of succession and that includes inheritance and by the Spirit of God I have been able to put some thoughts as a product of these contemplations and this will be um, our discussion tonight hoping that God will grant us superior spiritual intelligence to really understand God's idea of inheritance because I submit to you by the authority of Scripture that most people have missed it as far as understanding and even administering this whole idea of inheritance it is the reason why we do not have succession it is the reason why you can find a family an estate a business with one person excelling throughout his lifetime and then at his transition everything dies in spite of physical things available and around so God will grant us grace in Jesus name Proverbs chapter 13 please and verse 22 Proverbs 13 22 blessed be the name of the Lord Proverbs 13 22 the Bible says a good man liveth an inheritance to his children's children the a part is my emphasis but let's just finish up and the wealth of the sinner it says is laid up for the just it says a good man so in the mind of God and scripture there are many indices that are used to measure a noble or a good man 
and among them the bible says a man's being good is also measured using the index of his ability to live an inheritance not only to his children but his children's children hallelujah that means the minimum uh, point of focus as far as succession is concerned is at least two generations not even the immediate generation a good man lived an inheritance to his children's children hallelujah luke chapter 15 luke chapter 15 we'll begin our reading from verse 11 this is the story of the prodigal son we'll read to 14 then we'll jump from 25 so that we can walk with time there is a lot for us to learn and he said a certain man had two sons the younger of them said to his father father give me the portion of goods that followed to me and the bible says he divided unto them his living that means the young boy said father there is something i know that as an heir as one who is a beneficiary of your estate i'm not going to wait until you die give me my inheritance or the portion of good that fall to me and the father honored it that means the father based on the bible definition was a good man do we agree yes verse 12 or 13 now the bible says and not many days after the after the younger son gathered okay not many days after the younger son gathered all together that means he gathered something physical is that true it tells us immediately that what the father gave him was physical he gave him something physical or material the bible says he gathered all together watch this now and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance so the problem was not that the boy was not given he was given something physical and the bible says he gathered it and he wasted his substance with riotous living 14 and when he had spent all someone says spent all it's interesting that we never have this term used for the father the father being the owner of the wealth and the estate it was never said about the father he spent all and yet when we get to the son an expression is introduced now that is very disturbing that the young boy spent all that means that inheritance already this tells you is beyond physical things because he was given and yet the bible says there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want there was a day he was not in want but he began to be in want let's go to verse 25 now the elder son this gentleman had returned back home you know the story fed with swine until he was broken repented came back was restored now a feast was organized in honor of his return and the elder son was in the field the bible says and as he came and drew nigh to the house he heard music and dancing and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant 27 and he said unto him thy brother is come and thy father had killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound what a good man and he was angry the elder brother now and would not go in therefore came his father out and entreated him and he answering said unto his father lo this many years do I serve thee pay attention to that this many years do I serve thee neither transgress I at any time thy commandment and yet thou never gavest me a key that I might make merry with my friends verse 30 the father made a statement in 30 and 31 that is very instructive he says but as soon as this thy son was come which had devoured thy living with harlots thou hast killed for him the fatted calf 31 and he said unto him son thou art 
ever with me and all that I have everybody say all that I have <laughs> ah, that means there was more that he had than the boy got he said the boy got some things but you are with me all that I have we want to examine what are the all that that man had because the Bible lets us know that he gave the guy physical things and that is all that most people know to be inheritance and the boy left because he received physical things and did not receive others he came back in shame and the father said don't worry don't regret that I gave him physical things and I did not give you all that I have that means there is more that I have within me father give us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ in my study of scripture and the privilege of mentorship from exceptional people cutting across ministry the business world leadership and veterans people who have mastered life in its entirety I have learned from scripture that when the Bible talks about an inheritance there are five things that qualify to be called an inheritance and please listen to me even if you receive only four over that five you did not receive the inheritance it has to be five over five for it to be said from a kingdom standpoint that you received an inheritance please fathers listen carefully men listen carefully because there are many people today who have gone to their graves or if if they have an opportunity to come back to life they will cry and weep because their entire estates their whatever physical blessings that they had it was ruined in less than one year because all they gave their children were physical things the story of the prodigal son is a very powerful lesson that it will take more than giving physical things are we together that when you want to transfer an inheritance you don't have to be dead you can transfer an inheritance even in your lifetime but that many parents many fathers many elderly people are making a costly mistake that needs to be corrected through tonight's sermon because their focus in succession and transferring what they call to be an inheritance is simply physical estate cars houses or whatever it is and unfortunately this has produced a generation of irresponsible people who cannot even perpetuate any blessing even beyond one generation but the Lord will help us tonight in the name of Jesus Christ so there are five five things that the Bible expects one generation to transfer to the other in order for that generation to say they have given an inheritance five very quickly we'll get to the business of the night number one the first thing that qualifies to be called an inheritance that every father must transfer to his children every leader must transfer to their subordinates no matter what else you give people if you do not give them these you did not transfer an inheritance are you ready number one your convictions the first thing that qualifies to be called an inheritance is your convictions or are your convictions your convictions are a summation of your philosophies your beliefs your mindset so that if you want to bless the next generation more than just giving them physical things the first thing you need to give the next generation are your convictions everybody say convictions the summation of your philosophies your beliefs your mindset genesis chapter 18 please we'll read verse 17 to 19 Genesis chapter 18 hallelujah please look up this was um, 
a discussion between the Lord and Abraham as touching Sodom and Gomorrah. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do? Why? Verse 18. Seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Please read verse 19 together. Let's read verse 19 together. Are you ready? One to read. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him that they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he had spoken of him. So the Lord is saying there's no need. Abraham has become my friend among many reasons that he always thinks succession. I know that anything I tell Abraham will be preserved because he will transfer it even to the generations coming. The first gift and the first blessing that any elder, male or female, any leader, any man of God, the moment you want continuity, you want succession for your life, the first thing that you have to give is your convictions. If you cannot transfer your convictions to your subordinates, to your son spiritually and physically, then you have not given them an inheritance. Are we together? By the way, let me back up a bit and um, define for you. Let's talk forgive me let me just take a minute or two and put everyone in perspective let's define an inheritance we're still on course i just thought to take a break and then define an inheritance and then we'll continue what does it mean to inherit to inherit means to receive by succession or by will it's a legal statement to inherit means to receive by succession or to receive by will as an heir an heir there means a legally entitled person to inherit means to receive by succession or to receive by will as an heir so when we talk about someone inheriting something it means that you receive by succession or you receive by the will as an heir an heir there means you are legally entitled to it now let's define inheritance what is an inheritance an inheritance i wrote here is an acquisition of a possession could be property could be a condition or could be a trait an acquisition of a possession could be a property could be a condition could be a trait from past generations especially from parents to offsprings I'll take it again an inheritance is an acquisition of a possession be it property be it a condition or be it a trait from past generations especially from parents to offsprings so when we talk about inheritance we mean acquiring like we did say either by succession or through the will as an heir i believe you have that now so let's go to our discussion that there are five things that must be transferred from past generations to the next generation to make for succession and to qualify that you have laid up an inheritance for your children number one are your convictions deuteronomy chapter 6 will read for sake of time 1 2 7 20 and 21 1 2 7 20 and 21 i'll read and you listen now these are the commandments the statutes and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you. Listen carefully. That ye might do them in the land whither 
ye go to possess it. Verse 2. That thou mightest fear the Lord thy God to keep his statutes and his commandments which I command thee. Thou and thy son and thy son's son all the days of thy life that thy days may be prolonged. Are we together? Now jump please to verse 7. Verse 7. It says, And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house and when thou walkest by the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up. Verse 20. And when thy son asketh thee in the time to come, saying, What meaneth the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which the Lord hath commanded you? 21. It says, Then thou shalt say unto thy son, We were Pharaoh's born men in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out by a mighty hand. And then you read and read, and it continues. Now, the point is this that he's admonishing them that listen everything you are learning by reason of your experience that is building your conviction make sure you are close enough to your children that you do not leave without teaching them practice them in front of your children and let them ask you questions why do you believe this why do you know this there are many wealthy people many anointed people many great people who never reproduce themselves do you know why because they are unable to transfer their convictions the first thing to transfer to your children or to the generation coming are your convictions not material things is someone learning convictions now aside from the bible second only to the bible I have been thoroughly blessed and transformed by the industry we call the personal development industry. Hallelujah. Where we have men and women who have been able to shape our philosophies and our approach to life. Um, one of the stories that comes very readily to mind was the story of a wealthy man arguably the first billionaire recorded in the united states when they became a nation by the name andrew carnegie listen very carefully andrew carnegie was a very successful man history would tell us and then one time it was said that he felt very disappointed that many of the wealthy people within his class and the blessed people and the great people they were going to their graves and were never transferring the truths that made them wealthy and great. And other people who were failures or average people were just spectators. And they did not really know the secrets that controlled that level of excellence. And then he got a young man like many of you know and may have heard called Napoleon Hill. A young man in his 20s, history would tell us. And a young journalist. And he gave him an assignment. Listen carefully. The assignment was that I would give you letters of recommendation. Go and meet every one of these great and successful persons. And I want you to interview all of them one by one. Piece together their philosophies and put it together in a concise format. So that when we are long gone, we will be able to leave our convictions for the generations that come. And Napoleon Hill took on that journey. And for a period of about six years there, about, he went around interviewing all the greatest and the brightest of the minds at that time. And came together with 13 principles captured in a book that we know many of you may have heard about it called Think and Grow Rich. That was the product of that research. Vetting and interviewing all of these bright minds. What philosophies did they honor? To have produced such excelling lives hallelujah when i read that story many years ago it was so instructive listen to me you never reproduce a man's result until you are able to reproduce his philosophies his belief systems and his convictions never forget this 
no wonder the bible says let this mind be in you you want to become like jesus in experience you need to find out his convictions his philosophies his mindsets the first and about most important um transference that needs to happen from one generation to the other is not physical things the transference of convictions the transference of mindsets the transference of philosophies the transference of beliefs believe me the bible says for as he thinketh in his heart is that in your bible it says so is he that means if something is wrong in your life i have taught you this that your physical environment is only a reflection of the quality of your thinking and your philosophies unfortunately those who desire to receive from great men are not interested in receiving their convictions they don't focus on their minds to to put together the quality of their thinking please look up what do you believe about god what do you believe about satan what do you believe about failure what do you believe about success what do you believe about excellence what do you believe about wealth what do you believe about poverty what believe what do you believe about challenges what do you believe about victory these are the summation these philosophies will frame your mindset and will inevitably translate to the results you have you can have two men of god who love god sincerely mentored under the same father or the same mentor and you find out that their results become different impartation is there several other things are there but one may be interested in learning more than just physical things for one he may be interested in holding the mic and making news the other wants to study this is very powerful so the first gift please hear me any father here any parent any leader any businessman any man of god in thinking succession the first gift that you can give your child and should give your child are a summation of your convictions what made you great what did you know what did you believe what have you come to hold through that has translated to an excelling life that is the first gift that you give your child not material things unfortunately there are many children that pride themselves in cars and houses and designer clothes nothing wrong with that except that their lives are empty like the prodigal son because the prodigal son had physical things but no conviction are you seeing that now when the elder brother wanted to get sad the father said no don't feel bad there is something that gentleman did not ask for he asked for physical things but there are other things that i have one of them being my conviction i was not born like this so find out what i believed to be what I, let me tell you this every parent here i challenge you and every father and every leader make sure you do not go to your grave without capturing and preserving your philosophies and your beliefs in the most concise way give it to your child as a gift and you truly give him an inheritance hallelujah your convictions the first gift that must be transferred from one generation to the other now please look up do you know why there are so many people who are poor and mediocre i'm not talking about finances but just to borrow a concept when a poor man poor them meaning a description not an insult when a poor man sees a wealthy man the first thing he looks at is his pocket not his mind are we together you know a poor man not just by the absence of resources but his passion to see what is in the box poor people admire physical things the glitz and the glamour that come with great men but any mind that wants to rise is focused on the mentality what do you know and what do you understand let me challenge you therefore that in your quest to live an excelling life or to create succession to your results the first thing you should look out for 
are men and women whose minds are open and malleable to receive not people whose hands are free to receive people whose minds are ready to receive no wonder in many homes you see that those who truly receive the inheritance are some of the outcasts the boys that walk and do all of that because the children never learn the young boy is there watching the father while he's praying he may not be a biological son but he's there watching every step the day the father is not there all the children are at the mercy of the one who has the mindset not just the one who has the physical things hallelujah so the first thing you transfer if you are a good man leaving an inheritance to your children's children are your convictions be sure that your convictions have produced a correct result otherwise don't transfer something that will reproduce your own failure too the condition to transfer your convictions is that if those convictions have produced an excelling life unfortunately the same mindset that transfers excellence is the same mindset that transfers mediocrity also mediocres remain transgenerational mediocres by transferring a mindset that makes for mediocrity in fact i can tell you this by scripture and by reason of what i do most of what we call generational causes and most of what we call generational spiritual problems have been kept that way through generational mindsets that are passed along to so if a territory has generational poverty what happens is it is not only the spirit that is transferred the spirit will ensure that the mindset that makes it comfortable in administering poverty is also transferred that's why listen to my series on deliverance your real deliverance is not just exiting that spirit out of your life but there has to be a reorientation the Bible says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Unfortunately, age does not equal transformation. Longevity in this life may administer experience through pain, but it does not necessarily produce transformation. Hmm. Is someone learning? The next time your son comes to say, Daddy, I want my inheritance. Tell him, let me not see you near my garage. Or near my bank account go and get a clean sheet of paper and come and sit down let me transfer my inheritance and then start telling him the story that I was an orphan and as you are telling him that story ask him to write you are transferring an inheritance because at the end of that story the young boy will see and learn sadly the Bible never told us how the prodigal son's father became great it just tells us that the man was great can i tell you every great man you admire seek to find out their philosophies what do they know what have they learned the moment you are receiving is start rejoicing because i assure you behind their convictions is the power that reproduces their results this man of god is having great results in ministry i can tell you it's not just impartation go and find out what are his covenants with God what are the things that informs his mindset why does he carry such a strange and a great presence of God what are the sacrifices that pack his ministry everybody say convictions yes sir I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting extremely successful people in my life fathers of faith business people veterans and every time I have the privilege of meeting and talking with them, I'm not asking them how much are your shoes and shirt. That is, that is an unwise use of time. I go straight to ask them, please can you tell me your story? And then I'm looking for the punchlines in the story. When you change your mindset, when you made a decision, and I find keys there. In the name of Jesus, I speak over your life. The keys you must find, the transference of beliefs that produce an excelling life. May God help you to be sensitive to it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Do you know that history and even statistics tells us 
that those who are closest to great people hardly become great themselves. You know why? Because their focus is on the results. Usually it's those who do not have that privilege of access. They are the ones who keep looking and between the lines, they find keys. Let me charge you respectfully. If God has granted you the privilege to live a blessed and excelling life, financially, intellectually, in terms of your ranking and stature, let me give you a kind advice, respectfully speaking. Culture your children to understand that giving them physical things is not net inheritance. It is the transference of beliefs. Is someone learning? Number two, let's hurry up. What is the second thing you must transfer to the next generation? Are you ready? The second thing that qualifies to be called an inheritance is your name. The second thing you should transfer to your children as a good man is your name. Write it down. Your name means your credibility. Your name means your track record. Your name means your impact. Your name means your value and your contribution. The second thing that is worth transferring for succession to happen, to be called a good man according to scripture, is your name. Your credibility, your track record, your impact, your value and contribution, it can be transferable. Very, very powerful. Genesis chapter 12 and verse 2. Genesis 12 and verse 2. Someone is learning. It says, and I will make of thee a great nation. Is that in your Bible? And I will bless thee and make thy name great. Let me tell you the difference between being great and having a great name. When you are great, you are great for yourself. But when you have a great name, other generations can use it as a leverage. Today we buy products. We are not buying products. We are buying names. Are we together? When you go to a store and you say Louis Vuitton or Angelo Galasso or Gucci, you are calling the names of people. They transferred that name. At the end of your life, your name will either be a key or a padlock. There is no being neutral. At the end of your life, whether as a preacher, as a leader, as a businessman, and as a parent, your name to those who are before you will be a padlock or will be a key. It will either lock the doors and the destinies of people, multiplying hardship, or it will open doors for them. If you're with me, please shout amen. amen. Everybody say your name. Your name. Mm. Even Jesus gave us his name. He said, use my name. Don't mind the devil. Don't forget about how he looks. Whenever you see him, use my name. He said, in my name, there are possibilities that happen. It is not only the name of Jesus that is powerful. The name of a man is an investment of his track record, his credibility. There are names in this country, if you call, you will get a job immediately. Even if there is no space, they will created because that name is a track record of investment of many years hallelujah there are people who when favor is about to happen to you you keep praying that the name is not mentioned within that environment because the moment that name is mentioned there will be a reversal of that favor john which john the the tall one no please leave my office because with that name has come the memory of pain in 1975 that was the wicked man who caused trouble now the man has gone to be with the lord and yet people are still suffering because of his name can i tell you you are a failure truly if you cannot transfer your name i don't mean the spelling of it I mean the power that you would have accumulated in that name through many years. So next time your son comes or your daughter or your subordinate and say, give me my inheritance.
tell them i hope you are not talking of money sit down let me tell you the name you carry contains within it favor god has used that name to lift many take advantage of that name are we together the second thing that qualifies to be called an inheritance is your name please do not pray with your credibility do not play with your track record these are all build-ups giving you a name that your children and your children's children will eat from there are people who may not have physical money but their children will never beg for food you know why because even though they were cleaners their track record their integrity gave them a name and tomorrow they will say who this name it looks familiar they'll say my father is that carpenter i don't care if he's the carpenter come and you sit here let me tell you the world that we live in now most people will be lifted by the name they carry more than just their intellectual investment i can tell you in a city like abuja the first thing i learned when i moved into this city is that most of the things that happen to people is is not so much of course there is a place for meritocracy but i can tell you names can be a leverage there are people today who had to change different parts of their names for safety is that true because when they found out the stories behind that name they said this is too much battle i can't i can't spend my life fighting something i don't know anything about your name jesus said in my name take that name walk wonders with it when god makes your name great even when you are not there the name remains there and other people can come and use that name it's like a vehicle are we together the vehicle does not care who drives it just make sure it is driven and it will move please learn it your name is not just certain initials to identify you there are people today who have gotten jobs beyond their educational qualifications because of names may your name be a key in the name of Jesus Christ can I tell you there are people today who are suffering because their names brought them to trouble or the names that they inherited brought them to trouble every time you mention it there is trouble your credibility that means every day as you live your life you are adding pain to your children or adding favor did you hear what I said every day as you live your life you are making investments to your name by the time you are 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or maybe when you are long gone the investment you have made in your name like a bank account there are bank accounts that have 10 naira using the naira currency 100 naira 1 million there are bank accounts that have billions then there are those who own the banks they all have names there are kings there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones but only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no my goal is that god will use by the privilege of his grace whether my name the name of this ministry that it will become a key both in the physical realm in the economic realm in the spiritual realm in the political realm there are master keys they can open any door why is it the key in revelation called the key of david that is the key that can open a door that no man can shut please hear me there are many of you the way you are living your life now you are not yet seeing the effect is when your children come or when they grow you will know that you have spent your life investing pain from the wickedness to the jealousy to the attitudes that you keep bringing you got a job and nobody can get that job again because of you you oppress people and you are acting i am alpha and omega respectfully speaking one day you will retire 
and then when you retire you will now find out that there are children coming there are lecturers who victimize students and destroy them today those their children cannot get jobs because they never gave people a chance for a great life do not pride in being a wicked person you are programming pain for your children the second inheritance that you must pay attention to is your name hmm. your name your name jesus protected his name protected his name and guarded his name because he was going to give us that name today that name has been exalted abraham i will make thy name great is someone learning already let me give you a kind counsel live your life knowing that others will be beneficiaries of your carelessness or of your attentiveness to the laws of life you have to know this and you have to believe it there are many of us right now except God intervenes the way we are living our lives our children are already in trouble we don't have to talk about demons you have already programmed it it would take God and favor working together to bail them out because based on our attitudes there is no possibility for a job no possibility for a great life it ought not to be so please hear me if you're a man of God here let me give you a kind counsel it would take more than preaching Greek and Hebrew words more than laying on of hands more than the ability to speak well to be able to last transgenerationally you must make sure that more than your preaching you are sincere to invest in men hide away and deal with your insecurities and trust people by the time you fight everybody and you are the Alpha and the Omega as the man of God the day you are weak or you are not there that vision dies Is God helping us? Respectfully speaking, there are people in ministry and there are people in business who have fought everybody. Anybody who is not you, you fight them. Fight every church. Fight every man of God. Fight every other person and you stand proud. You are programming disaster to yourself and everybody there. The Lord is helping us tonight. A good man liveth an inheritance inheritance number two your name are you ready for number three inheritance number three that must be transferred in fact i didn't finish let me give you two more scriptures on that name proverbs 22 and verse 1 it says a good name proverbs 22 and verse 1 a good name is rather to be chosen look at the bible than great riches that if we keep riches here physical riches and we keep a good name he advises you to choose a good name because a good name can buy riches but riches cannot buy a good name ecclesiastes 7 and verse 1 ecclesiastes 7 and verse 1 again it says a good name is better than precious ointment man of god anointing is powerful but make sure with that anointing you have a good name a credibility and a track record of loving sincere people i was returning from um a trip you know coming back to prepare for the service and i was handed a newspaper and i was just going through it and i saw somebody wrote something that blessed me so much he said um, i hope i can remember he said there are many people who are powerful but very few people are loving i said wow this is so instructive many people are powerful do you know how many men of god have power but there is no love how many business people have resources and intellect but you come near them you want to run away they don't look like christ at all he says by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples not when you pray in tongues not when you raise the dead not when you teach properly much more than all of these things i am telling you the greatest uh, virtue that qualifies you is your love life are we together you will be surprised that there are many people as sound as they are 
spiritually as intelligent as they are intellectually they never find help and nobody wants to come around them you know why I have taught you and we teach it a lot in the school of ministry that people do not care what you know until they know that you care they don't care what you know it's none of their business carry your Greek and Hebrew carry your anointing take it places they want to know that you genuinely love them if you keep power and keep love I will pick love a thousand times before I pick power because what defeated Satan on the cross was not power it was love there abided these three faith that moves mountains hope that makes not a shame and love it says the greatest is love is someone learning now let's go to number three what is the third inheritance you must transfer to the generations after you your relationships and connections number three so number one your convictions number two your name a summation of your credibility your track record your value your contribution number three if you ever want to bless your children your subordinates or the people you are raising give them the leverage of your relationships and your connections hmm. John chapter 19 please John chapter 19 let's read from verse 26 God is speaking to someone tonight now watch this this is Jesus hanging on the cross <laughs> and he sees remember all the disciples had gone away from him but there was this one person John and his mother standing before him watch what happened when Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciples standing by whom he loved because he loved him he said unto him mother behold your son and then 27 he said to the disciple behold your mother and your Bible says from that hour that disciple took her home that means this is the woman that made me mighty I know you call me Jesus but respect the woman who raised me until the Holy Ghost came I transferred that relationship John no wonder he did not die a natural death the same way it, it took listen Jesus had to lay his life down and until his time was on all other disciples and apostles were martyred except John the be loved not John the powerful find out what Mary did when Jesus handed over her to him don't you think Mary was an ordinary woman the angel spoke about her and said you are favored there were things she was carrying and he said John I want to give you a gift for standing by me on the cross I hand you over to this woman follow her she will do something to you do you know what it means to carry the Word of God in your womb for nine months you will never be normal never be normal hear me please relationships are a potent leverage you can hand over relationships and cut short somebody's 10 years of suffering the third inheritance God is changing someone's life your relationships to the point that when the Holy Ghost when Jesus was going to heaven he said don't worry there is a relationship I'm about to introduce to you don't worry I am leaving but do not cry there is one called Alos Paracletos the Paraclet himself I am about to connect you to a relationship and when he that spirit of truth is come that he will guide you you will no longer be ordinary men all it takes is a relationship please listen you have heard me say it that who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters a king hates a woman and without fighting her she stopped becoming queen immediately then the king likes a village woman and immediately she became queen please look at me can I tell you this every great man is great among other factors because of the relationships that protect and defend him at that realm 
you have not transferred real wealth until you transfer your relationships now many non-christians understand this and they begin to program their children you've seen that happen they program their children to have strategic relationships political relationships economic relationships judicial relationships military relationships only believers we pray in tongues and yet we are bankrupt of intelligence please sit down the house of god is a place of wisdom next time your child says i'm ready for my inheritance Tell him, go to the house of the uncle that helped me and go and wash his car. He says, I'm too big. Say, sit down. You are not ready for a relationship. You are not ready for any inheritance. Don't give him any car key for anything. Give him relationships. Every man is made by his relationships because all blessings come from God through man to man. Nothing comes directly comes from God if God says yes and a physical man says no that yes will remain in the realm of the spirit there is someone learning please look up I can tell you this my life today is a product of strategic relationships there are hard things that have become childishly easy because of the leverage of relationships the relationship with the Holy Spirit the relationship with strategic men please do not downplay the power of relationships look at me how many of you have strategic relationships within the judiciary if you are in trouble today nobody loves you enough to help you you will suffer both Satan and men will walk in partnership and rubbish your life because you have not seen the value many of you have fought and insulted politicians you have insulted everyone the day you now need help and you need the gates to be open for you there are times that you can be joseph but you will still be in prison it will take the king to send for you to come out of your dungeon hallelujah when you see businessmen and politicians i'm, I'm not marketing any of them but i'm just teaching you wisdom you've heard me say it when a businessman will leave america and come to nigeria to celebrate the birthday of a two-year-old billionaire son is the baby his mate can the baby talk to him what do you think he's doing to fly a private jet hundreds of thousands of dollars to come and greet a baby is more than a baby and then he comes with his own children he comes with his own children he says this one is called John whether this one wants to play with him or not he will force that relationship to happen because he knows believers let's learn let's learn let's learn please sit down the Bible says which man intending to wage war against a city will first count whether he has what it takes to fight and if he discovers he does not have the next thing is the way of negotiation and relationship for peace to reign there are people today they do not have money but they can cough out billions out of relationships and it will answer in the multitude of men is a king's honor not just the multitude of things to the degree to which you can call on the help of men and they can respond to you with unbending loyalty that is the degree to which you are great value men and value relationships inheritance number three relationships and connections relationships and connections someone once asked me a question one day i told you he said how come you are close to a lot of you seem to have a lot of generals and military people and paramilitary what is between you and military people i said god knows the kind of call upon my life that's why he brought those relationships if you touch me both god and men whether you go to the realm of the spirit or from the physical realm there is a system that's for sure while i'm praying my own oh,
listen let me encourage you here please look up let me ask you a simple question I've asked you this but I will ask it again can you mention one person in your life right now who you can actually call and say I need help by 2 a.m. and he will wake up and say I value you so much help is coming if you don't have such a person in your life believe me you are sitting on a time bomb there are men of God who love the Lord sincerely but they lack strategic relationships I'm not talking of parasitic relationships that every time people see you they know that this taker has come there are people in this nation if their car gets burnt in the next one hour another car is coming even if it's for temporal use they will never be left in shame there are people today if their house gets burnt they will have a place to spend the night can I tell you this among the many things you invest in please invest in men this is the world of men place value on men I was very honored and even flattered when I came in I thought I did something wrong I saw you people shouting and clapping on one hand sincerely I'm a very conservative person I can be shy and except when I'm on stage of course once I'm not on stage when I'm on stage that anointing is on me so I, I don't really care but outside of that I can you know but when I saw you clapping on one hand I felt of course I didn't it wasn't necessary but on another hand I was praying I said Lord may somebody learn it who loves you enough to be there for you don't budge into a future you did not invest in and expect a stake in it no who's who did you help to rise when someone was crying were you there to wipe the tears if you were not there when I was in the cave of Adulam, don't expect an invitation when I'm celebrating. Listen, one of the easiest ways to rise is to find something working and someone rising and be part of the history of growth. Hallelujah. By the privilege of God's grace, with the bit that I've been able to do for God in ministry and leadership, I've had the honor of seeing some of my dear people within the ministry and by extension spiritually. I've seen the mighty and the marvelous things that God continues to do with them in ministry, in leadership, in business. And when I sit with them and they share this with me, my heart is genuinely gladdened. Can I tell you, as tired as I am, there are people when they call, I will wake up. Don't ask me who. If you don't know, you are not it. Can somebody see you as being valuable, a valuable contributor to their life? Many of you have knocked on doors and ended up in shame because you use your days of glory thinking about yourself alone and never consider that this is the, a world that, that is interdependent. Please change and teach your children there are children who are respectfully speaking lousy they don't respect anybody they just believe that things will work out they are not building their track record of relationships because they think they have money or they think they have some kind of thing they laugh at the houseboy laugh at the cleaner laugh at anybody and then the tables just turn sometimes overnight is God giving us wisdom Turn to your neighbor and say, I value you. Let me say it now. Hear me as I'm saying it. I value you. I value that relationship. Don't act tomorrow like you don't know me. Remember, koinonia. Look up, please. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, please look up. Look up. Do you know? Hear me. Do you know that relationships can create not only leverage, they can create exemptions? It is true. There are people today who have owned land they did not pay for, houses they did not pay for. Relationships paid for it. Who knows you and loves you by reason of your committal and genuine sincere connection? and contribution to their lives.
there are people everybody who is close to you you have hurt and wounded and caused pain life is watching you tonight is a night of repentance change because you are programming woes over your children whilst you are seated there in one minute please lay your hands on your head and say lord grant me the wisdom the wisdom to maintain strategic relationships and then the wisdom to start connecting my children and my children's children to the strategic relationships that have worked for me please pray you are a young man here pray for the grace to build strategic relationships you are an elderly person pray father the grace to maintain the relationships that have helped my success and that my children will have the discipline and the humility to value relationships your connections your relationships hallelujah praise the name of the lord the true story one of these times i can't remember which which of the years now I was trying to process a visa for one of the nations and then when I was doing my biometrics and I just sat in front and a gentleman saw me and was happy he was rejoicing and he said apostle I can't believe it I said what can't you believe I came to get a visa what kind of embarrassment is this do the needful and let me leave this place and he said no let me tell you a story you had come to preach on our campus so 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 years ago and this and that and that and I'm walking in this place right now and he was laughing he got up and went and spoke something to a woman i don't know what they discussed but he returned back and i laughed i said lord you see how easy some things can be i've shared with you an old story here when we we're in zaria we we're told that story that some people were a gentleman was going to nda and then because of the height requirement he didn't match the height requirement, so they disqualified him. And being saddened, he went and because his father knew the then late Amir, he went to him and said, Sir, they disqualified my son. And then he did not even write. The then Amir, we were told, said he should go back and tell the commandant that the Amir has added his height. That's right. Who can add your height? in this wicked world that we live in please i hope as you are laughing you are taking seriously what i'm saying yes some of you as soon as you finish service even if someone is stretching his hands you can look at him from head to toe no you are not my class be careful be careful don't forget that as tattered as they are looking something came on them in that service treat people with honor treat people with dignity don't treat only wealthy and blessed people with dignity you are a hypocrite treat everybody with honor and dignity the apostle he cannot speak english no problem still treats them with honor relationships relationships number four inheritance number four that a good man lives for his children's children are you ready physical assets now that's what most people call inheritance physical assets your cash your properties your businesses your estates your cash properties businesses estates in as much as i challenged it as being the ultimate thing you give it is also worthy of transference you can transfer physical things proverbs 19 4 let's walk quickly media proverbs chapter 19 and verse 4 he said did i get that right 19 4 oh dear wealth make many friends that's not what i'm looking for please help me my apologies numbers 27 let's look at 6 to 11 i must have missed a number or so numbers 27 let's start from verse 6 to 11 All right and the lord spake unto moses saying we're reading to 11 this and that all of these people thou shalt surely give them a possession 
of an inheritance among their father's brethren pay attention and thou shalt cause the inheritance of their father to pass unto them reading to 11 and thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel saying if a man die and have no son then ye shall cause his inheritance to pass to his daughter this is the law of inheritance verse 9 and if he have no daughter then shall ye shall give his inheritance to his brethren verse 10 and if he have no brethren then ye shall give his inheritance unto his father's brethren last verse and if his father have no brethren then ye shall give his inheritance unto his kinsmen that is next to him of his family and he shall possess it and it shall be unto the children of Israel a statute of judgment as the Lord has commanded. So there is a place for transferring physical estate and resources. Hallelujah. I can tell you there are people whose lives have been accelerated because they had the privilege of receiving an inheritance. It is not until an individual dies you can provide leverage of resources. For instance, I know people who haven't trained their children, haven't helped them. They gave these children the gift and the blessing of a house and say a car. Discipline them and give them. Do you know that if you give your child a house and a car, under, um, for as long as you discipline that child and help the child to understand, you have given that child a big leverage. For an average person, do you know, for an average young man, you know how many years it would take to build a house and to buy a car? So when you give people physical things, it is also a blessing to them. Joshua chapter 11, let's read from verse 15. If God is helping you, shout amen. amen. Joshua 11 and verse 15. Please pay attention as I read. As the Lord commanded Moses his servant, so did Moses command Joshua. And so did Joshua. He left nothing undone that the Lord commanded Moses. So what did he do? 16. Joshua took all that land, the hills and all the south country, and all the land of Goshen and the valley and the plain, the mountain of Israel and the valley of the same. We're reading to 23. Even from the Mount Halak that goes on to Seir, even to all of those mountains, to Lebanon, Hamon, and all their kings he took and smote them and slew them. 18. Joshua made war a long time with those kings. There was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel, save the Hivites, the inhabitants of Gibeon, all order they took in battle 20 for it was of the lord to harden their hearts that they should come against israel in battle that he might destroy them utterly and that they might have no favor but that it might destroy them as the lord commanded moses next verse watch this now and at the time came joshua and cut off the anakims from the mountains from hebron Debir, anab and all the mountains of judah and from all the mountains of Israel, it says Joshua destroyed them utterly with their cities. Next verse. There was none of the Anakims left in the land of the children of Israel. Only in Gaza and in Gath and in Ashdod there remain. Next verse please. It says so Joshua took the whole land according to all that the Lord said to Moses. Hear this. Joshua gave it for an inheritance unto Israel according to their divisions by their tribes and the land rested from war. Please look at me. Let me challenge especially every man here. As much as God grants you grace, let me not put you under pressure, but please make sure that when God gives you the gift of time, be able to justify it by using the favor of God, your value, your relationships in putting something physical together that can provide a leverage to a responsible child. Hallelujah. 
there are many young people in let me tell you why prosperity is not perpetuated especially in africa because when the an average young man starts in life he does not start from zero he starts from minus minus means he will pay the price of the parents carelessness then when he's 40 or 50 that's when he arrives at zero and then by the end of his life he now makes the same mistake demons and spirits will come and add to bring it to minus again then he will add he will give his child there are regions in this nation that have a leverage of perpetuating wealth or have a track record because they continue to build one upon another when you go to israel you go to europe you go to america you will find out that some of these people they have businesses and estates that are 200 years old 300 years old 150 years old the founders are long gone but they gave the estate don't think about yourself alone a good man so says scripture leaves an inheritance to his children's children if you can't give them a house give them land if you can't give them land at least let there be some money i submit to you that establishing yourself as a young man in our world today with the dignity of kingdom integrity will require the grace of God. Go and ask builders how much is one block? How much is one bag of cement? How much is a plot of land in a city like Abuja here and in many cosmopolitan cities? An average young man, respectfully speaking, who is receiving say a hundred thousand a hundred and fifty with the dignity of kingdom integrity without corruption without anything and minus any other leverage it would take god for that gentleman to be established do you agree with me by the time he's been established his children are already teenagers and that suffering will cut them short they may not be able to go to school at a good pace this is how people continue to lag again and again but in the name of Jesus, after this discussion, may that grace, that grace that will add favor to everything you are doing, to accelerate your establishment, may that grace rest upon you. Hear me? You see the reason why when I'm praying for favor, you should receive. Because by the natural course of things, as far as our world today has presented itself, you must play games and cut corners to be able to be established early. Physical assets. It is not unscriptural, even if it will require a parent denying themselves certain levels of comfort to provide that leverage. May God bless, I know that it is men's, men's today is um, Father's Day and bless the men, but may God bless both men and women who have paid the price to at least give their children something. There are people who never had the privilege of going to school, but mama will say, I, even if it means me frying something by the roadside to give my children that leverage, may God bless you for that sacrifice. There are elderly people, respectfully speaking, who are selfish. They would rather the generations ahead of them perish, provided they will have momentary comfort. No. Physical things can be a blessing. If God can help you and you can give your child a car or give your child a house or give your child some kind of physical assets to help and provide a leverage, provided the first things are done, convictions and the rest, that now becomes a blessing. If the prodigal son was wise enough to collect other things alongside the physical blessings, he would not have had to return back in shame. But he collected physical things alone. Hallelujah. Let me encourage you here. If there is any parent, father or mother in your life, whether spiritually, physically, or by adoption who has provided any kind and any form of physical leverage make it a duty until the day you see Jesus to honor them in the secret and in the open 
there are many of you here by the privilege you know God has granted your parents and your loved ones to be financially disposed and they have provided all kinds of leverage for you please do not take it for granted hallelujah do not take it for granted there are people here casually your father just bought you a car and gave you your father just bought a three-bedroom flat and gave you and some of us with our attitude of ingratitude can turn and say what is i thought i will have another one whereas there's somebody who is praying and say lord even if i can start with one room i am still grateful perhaps at the end of this service some of you may need to extend text messages communicating gratitude to your loved ones to say i sat down in church today and just thinking about my life i want to say thank you for the money you gave me it stopped me from becoming a prostitute thank you for the car you gave me it stopped me from becoming a 419er and a fraudster some of us may need to go back to our loved ones some of us may need to go back through history and say thank you to certain people who provided that physical leverage let's do a quick recap before i give you the final one has god helped you tonight inheritance number one your convictions inheritance number two your name inheritance number three your relationships inheritance number four your physical assets are you ready for number five inheritance number five your mantle and your anointing this for me is the master inheritance that you can transfer hmm. only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end there are names there are titles there are legends and tales of strength but only Yeshua will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end. there are names there are there are titles there are titles there are legends and tales of strength only Yeshua only Yeshua will reign forever me beyond anything physical that makes a man there are spiritual qualities that men carry that distinguish them in life and destiny please I want you to pay attention every man that is made genuinely made there is a spirit factor that is responsible for all that you see manifest There is no man who is just made from the resources of this realm alone. As vast and as diverse as they are, if you last in relevance and you make any constructive impact in this life, part of the resources that must have made you you must have been outsourced from a realm that is higher than this dimension. Behold, I show you a mystery. Let me show you something that will surprise you. Genesis 25. <laughs> no matter what you give anybody you seek to succeed you, you have not truly blessed them if you, tr if you do not transfer the mantle, the spirit, the unction, and teach them the secrets of maintaining it. You don't only transfer mantles and anointings, you must teach them your secret with God that kept it. Please pay attention. We're about to pray now. Genesis 25. The entire text is from verse 1 to 11. But we may jump a few places for time's sake. Follow carefully. I'll begin my reading. Then again, Abraham took a wife. Remember, this was when Sarah passed on. The Bible says they brought him another woman called Keturah. Verse 2. 
And she bare him Zimran, Jokshan, Median, Median, and all those names. Verse 3. In total, Abraham had about eight children that we know. Six from Keturah, and then one from Sarah, and then one from Hagar. Are we together? Verse 4 now. Okay, he's just talking about, let's jump to verse 5. I'm saving time. The Bible says, everybody please read it. One to read. Does this look like something you saw in the parable? Remember uh, in the, the story of, um, And Abraham gave all that he had unto Isaac. Verse 6. But to the sons of the concubines, which Abraham had, he gave what? Wow. Abraham gave all that he had to the one he knows is a son of covenant and promise. But to the rest, he called them and gave them gifts and sent away from Isaac, his son. The Bible says, while he yet lived eastward unto the east country, read seven and these are the days of the years of abraham's life which he lived a hundred and three score and 15 years jump to 11 please verse 11 and it came to pass after that the de after the death of abraham that god blessed how many what of the rest how many sons did you read that he had and now the Bible says, after Abraham died, God blessed his son Isaac. What of the rest? What did he give Isaac that he did not give the rest? Hmm. Genesis 26 from verse 12. Please give us New King James Version if we can find that. Genesis 26 and verse 12. There was something Abraham gave Isaac that the rest did not have. The Bible says he gave them gifts. But to Isaac he gave all that he had. Everyone, please read with me. We're reading from verse 12 and then I will continue. Ready? One to read. Then Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in that same year. And the Lord... He did not sow that same year because he was the only one who sowed. Many people sowed just like him. But what was on his head was now controlling what was around his life. Verse 13. Be patient and read. One to read. And the man began to prosper and continued prospering until he became very... What was on his head brought him what he had now in 14. Go to 14. What did he have? Of flocks and possessions of herds and a great number of servants. So the Philistines, he gave his sons gifts, but he gave this boy a mantle. He said, this is all that made me me. Go with it. You may go empty, but you cannot remain empty with this on your head. Verse 15, we're reading to 16. I'm saying this because this night, something is going to come upon your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, the Philistines had stopped all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham his father, and they had filled them with earth. Verse 16. It says, Abimelech said to Isaac, go away from us. For you are much mightier. That means there is something you can receive. While you are receiving it, your hand is still empty. Your bank account is still empty. But destiny begins to rejoice. And say you got something. You got something more than money. You got something more than relationships. You got something more than a name. I reserve this to be the last because there are few people who ever receive this. Hear me? Whether for men of God or business people, 
or captains of industry this is the mystery behind the inability for sons to reproduce what is on their fathers they are looking for physical things but they never cease to carry that one factor ah, i sense an anointing already he gave isaac all that he had genesis 27 please genesis 27 we're about to pray please be sensitive genesis 27 we'll begin our reading from verse 1 we'll read 1 to 7 everybody please watch please let me have your attention don't be distracted if you are distracted with this story is an attack just listen carefully and it came to pass that when isaac was old and his eyes were dim so that he could not see he called esau his eldest son and said unto him my son and he said behold here am i we're reading to seven he said behold now i am old i know not the day of my death next verse now therefore take i pray thee thy weapons thy quiver and thy bow and go out to the field and take me some venison next verse and make me savory meat such as i love and bring it unto me that i may eat that my soul may bless thee before i die verse 5 and rebecca heard when isaac spake to esau his son and esau went to the field to hunt for venison and bring and to bring it verse 6 and rebecca spake unto jacob her son saying behold i heard thy father speak to esau thy brother saying bring me venison and make me savory meat that i may eat and bless you before the that bless you before the lord before my death now jump for sake of time to verse 18. i want to show you a very deep mystery the highest form of inheritance that can be transferred and he came unto his father and said my father and he said here am i this is jacob now who art thou my son and jacob lied to his father i am esau thy firstborn i have done according as thou badest me arise i pray thee sit and eat of my venison that thy soul may bless me next verse and isaac said unto his son how is it that thou hast found it so quickly my son and he said because the lord thy god brought it to me he's lying no as advised by his mother and isaac said unto jacob come near i pray thee that i may feel thee my son whether thou be my very son esau or not reading to 29 22 and jacob went near unto isaac his father and he felt him and said the voice is jacob's voice but the hands are the hands of esau and he discerned him not because his hands were hairy and his brother esau's hands so he blessed him 24. look at he said art thou my very son esau and he said i am watch this now and he said bring it near to me and i will eat of my son's venison that my soul may bless thee and he brought it near to him and he did eat and he brought him wine and he and he drank 26 and his father said unto him come near now and kiss me my son 27 and he came near and kissed him and smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said see the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which the lord had blessed 28 therefore god give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine next verse let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee he said be lord over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons oh 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 bow down to thee cursed be everyone that cursed thee and blessed be he that blessed thee 
verse 30 and it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made the end of blessing Jacob and Jacob was yet scarce gone out of the presence of Isaac his father that Esau his brother came from his hunting watch this and he also had made savory meat and brought it unto his father and said unto his father let my father arise and eat of his son's venison that thy soul may bless me next verse and Isaac his father said unto him who art thou and he said I am thy son thy firstborn Esau 33 and Isaac trembled very exceedingly and said who where is he that had taken venison and brought it to me and I have eaten of all before thou camest and I have blessed him and yea he shall be blessed it's a law I've released it already now watch this 34 when Esau heard the words of his father the Bible says he cried with a great and exceeding bitter cry and he said unto his father bless me even me also my father verse 35 and he said thy brother came with subtlety and had taken away where is the blessing and how do you take it away because he did not carry any physical thing is it not just to speak couldn't he speak again ah there is more to the realm of the spirit than you see how can a gentleman just cry a matured adult crying and the father said sorry so it's not about repeating words there was something that had already come on jacob let's finish to 36 and he said is not he rightly named jacob for he had supplanted me these two times number one he took away my birthright and behold now he had taken away my blessing and he said has thou not reserved a blessing for me even one can i tell you this believe me when i tell you what is on your head is what controls what is around your life there are many people who are, whose hands are full but their heads are empty and easily what is in your hands can evaporate Real inheritance is not the physical things you carry. The conviction of the one before you, the name that he gives you, the relationships that he gives you, the physical assets, which is the least, and then the greatest is the mantle and the grace that turn him you will hear the stories of people especially in the body of christ you will hear a man of god tell you when god called me i could not even speak english and today he has a ministry around the world brothers and sisters it takes more than hard work there are spiritual forces that may have come to partner with such a person there are people who came to this abuja they did not have up to 100 naira but their mama sent them from the village saying i don't have money but i once helped missionaries in 1971 and they said may my children be blessed my son go with this blessing and that gentleman will carry a box looking like an arm robber and as soon as he steps in abuja the forces of the spirit start mobilizing themselves hear me this is why some people do not fear it is not what is on their hand it is what is on their head that yea i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i fear no evil hear me when i tell you i am a product of many anointings this is what i mean i have secured the blessing the sworn blessing of many people hold on do you see why they took Jesus to the temple immediately he was born they took him to the temple and met Anna the prophetess she spoke over him met Simeon the prophet spoke over him they said now Jesus you can go we, we guarantee you will succeed 
was our father in the Lord Bishop David Oyedeko who said he was somewhere in the US and the Lord cut short his meeting and said return back and make my people rich he didn't give them any physical money but he came back with an anointing that he can declare and say be blessed and you will hear that somebody did not apply for a job and yet they called him because thou anointest my head with oil but I see the results of my cup you don't anoint my cup you anoint my head but it's my cup that runs over listen believe me sometimes I wish I have the liberty to share testimonies but in many regards it will sound like arrogance I remember years ago a man of God prayed a prayer for me I met that man and I greeted him and I prayed an elderly man and he just said a prayer I I I, I, I was it, it took a long time to say amen because he laid hands on me and he said apostle he said may God create a problem that only you can solve I said ah no why I'm somebody who is for the body I don't like all these kinds of things how can a man pray that kind of prayer you've heard my story that I was in just many years ago and I went to go and buy sugar cane listen true story and there were two old women who were trying to buy I think sugar cane it was not more than 100 naira I pleaded with them I said you are my parents I'm your child please give me the privilege of paying for you they said no I said let me pay and when I paid they began to bless me and one of the women blessed me in Hausa she said my son forever walk upon gold men are not just made by circumstances there are spiritual investments that men carry I've shared with you my stories of my encounters with the mantles upon God's generals. I, I don't just come and make empty noise. No. Now you understand what happened when Jesus appeared to me. I've shared with you my story. When he appeared to me, he never gave me anything physical, but he stretched his hands and light from the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, that light entered into me, that surge of power and that surge of grace. Please help them. Shalegete pekatos koto brandegeta, kaligete pras katos, empra kate katos, shapres kadina ka, engre teke le katos kiata. I came here tonight to redefine inheritance for you. Inheritance is not cars and houses. No, that is the least. Inheritance is not just estates. You have not helped your son, let me tell you. If the only thing you give him is a car and a house, arm robbers can steal the car. They can demolish the house. But can you give something that cannot rust, cannot be destroyed? hear me he gave the remaining children gifts but he gave Isaac everything he had and yet there was no Isaac carrying a truck load calling a truck there are many young people who have been praying for their parents to die Lord let them die so I can get the two bedroom flat don't insult your destiny what was upon your father that made him to never beg that's what you should look for not three bedroom flats not two bedroom flats there are shamefully i say it with all due respect there are siblings and family members fighting for years and decades over mundane properties not knowing that if you receive what made the men themselves you can change the tides there are people today who do not see eyeball to eyeball this guy is for me this house is for me that is the least of it we're about to pray I came tonight full of the spirit I want to release something from my spirit 
believe me help them honestly i came from the depth of my spirit that something will be placed upon your head that will so turn your life around we're wrapping up two keys for receiving from fathers let me give you two biblical keys you want to receive from a father a spiritual father a physical father a financial father a political father any kind of father there are two keys number one the first key that controls receiving from fathers is honor the first key you will never this is why our generation of young men do not succeed because we have institutionalized this honor we see it as a thing of pride young people who have not produced anything they've not raised anybody they've not changed any life but we can sit down and mark the scripts of fathers and dare to criticize every father deserves your honor even if you see their nakedness the bible says noah's sons they saw their nakedness and one called his brothers to come and laugh even though he was drunk when he got up he knew they were looking at him there are some things that are there and the other one moved backwards and covered him and he got up and cursed some of the sons two keys number one honor malachi chapter one we'll read six to eight fire is going to fall here right now malachi chapter one from verse six to eight it says a son honored his father and a servant his master if then i be a father where is mine honor and if i be a master where is my fear saith the lord god of hosts O priest that despise my name and ye say wherein have we despised your name we're reading to eight ye offer polluted bread upon my altar and ye say wherein have we polluted thee in that ye say the table of the lord is contemptible verse 8 and if ye shall offer the blind for sacrifice is it not evil and if ye offer the lame and the sick is it not evil offer it now to your governor will it be pleased with thee, or accept thy person say the lord of hosts can i tell you this do you know why jacob isaac already had flocks but he said the one i want to eat is the one you go and get not the one at the back of the house why would he have flocks and herds and now tell his son carry your weapons of war i want the one that came from your effort place value on it let me eat let your honor for me turn to joy because that blessing from my spirit is only released through joy there are many children today who are carrying curses from their parents not demons because they've spent their lives causing pain to their parents sometimes we ship all kinds of things in the name of westernization and you see children insult their parents insult any kind of person and I, I, i'm saying this respectfully speaking young people whether in this country or across africa this is one of the mysteries behind the hard life of young people we have no honor at all for parents not just physical parents anybody can get up and just insult anybody no you will carry courses in successions We read it already genesis 27 when you read from verse 3 and 4 he said make me venison such that i love make me venison from your weapons of war honor is not just about giving money or giving seeds but let me tell you this as a person and as a principal you will never see me go and stand before any of our fathers of faith in this nation or any of any great mentor or father whether in business whether in whatever area i won't sit down and say i'm a great man apostle joshua selman 
I understand this law when I honor I honor from the depth of my heart there are many pastors today you can lie down and hold the legs of a man of God and never receive jack because it comes through honor you can even kneel down and still be standing up in your heart it's not about all of this pretense and this this hypocrisy people do genuine heartfelt honor is the reason why you see great people hardly reproduce themselves everything God gives a great man it is supposed to be for everyone who is interested but very few people do you know that there are many homes like I told you the biological children of the man and his wife don't seem to carry their grace and then you will see one stranger who maybe came to squat the person who communicates honor is the one who carries the mantle learn it from tonight let honor be a culture husbands honor your wives you don't honor your wife your prayer will not be answered the bible said that wives honor your husbands don't say he looked for me what does that mean children honor your parents bring in all this westernization and you will punish your future in a way that you cannot imagine parents also respectfully speaking honor your children because there are things through their life that you may not have seen that God is revealing. Help this woman. I'm seeing oil coming on her. The first key for receiving from fathers. Fathers here does not just mean men alone. Those who have gone ahead is honor genuine honor how many pastors today talk about their leaders their overseers their, they gossip about them tear them down and then come up yes sir how are you sir that's the reason why no impartation works because the honor is not genuine how many business people how many people in corporations they sit down and tear their superiors insult them and talk all kinds of things and see them ah, see you sir God bless you he can cut cake for you and you can eat but that is it but there can be others who will say look i know this man is not perfect but i choose to honor him whatever granted him grace to come to abuja here and in five years he has become this i stand with understanding and i know and one day he can look at you and say i bless you or he will say let me tell you a story in 1971 my father died in 1972 my mother died in 1973 all my helpers died so how did you become great that is what is leading you to and a two-hour conversation will become a six-hour conversation in that office and at the end of it you will say I met one missionary who just said a prayer and I want to pray that prayer for you sometimes you see our father in the lord that is you he will ask everybody to stand up see just because people don't tell you anointings are like addresses you can know where they came from when you see extraordinary results happening for people please let me tell you this look beyond the physical frame there are people who is a combination of strange mantles and anointings upon their heads hallelujah when Papa Idahosa was alive according to God's servant Bishop Oedeko he would tell you that one time he came to him and delivered something and he gave him an opportunity to pick some money and he said no if I remember correctly he said no 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 what I want is that blessing and he told him kneel down he said from tonight I impart upon you the grace of on time that before any need arises the answer comes and he received it when God grant me the grace and the privilege to lie down and pray alone in daddy Joe's prayer room I was not praying and saying God bless me give me tea give me bread I would be stupid to pray that kind of prayer I lay down there and one of the things I prayed I said Lord the covenant of answered prayer of many fathers who have gone that you have placed upon this man that he can speak casually and shift the climate of nations may that same grace come upon me 
I shared with you my story when we went to Equity State and I saw people dying at 130 something, 140 something, 150 something. I said, no, there has to be a grace here. When we were done preaching years ago, I now came back and we stopped at a house where someone 136, he just died. I said, please look for the oldest man here so that we can receive this grace for long life. There were hardly people there who could speak English. Eventually we got somebody who could speak limited English and they took us to one man, old man. And we said, we are men of God. We just want him to speak over our lives. And he looked at me and smiled and said, kneel down. Those who carry this thing know they have it all. Let me tell you, those who carry it, they know they have it. You don't stand before people as colleagues and receive mantles. No, mantles don't honor, don't, don't respond to colleague mentality. Oh, I used to know this one. And as they prayed, I felt like a crown was being put upon my head. I now honored him, gave him a seed. And when we were going to go and enter the car, thanking the women who we asked initially, I just saw one of the women and they said that was the wife of this senior, um, the man of God, this veteran that had gone. They now, do you know that the woman was in her hundreds and yet she was standing strong, no stick, no nothing. I said, what is this? I said, let's go back home. If he's dead, she's still alive in him. Two have become one. The woman tapped me and said, come. She opened the room and started showing me the pictures that was the wife of his youth i hope you know those days they used to marry as teenagers that woman had stayed with him till his final days and then i said since this man is dead and he died serving the lord they should tell her that please they've prayed for us but i want prayer from her the woman said i should kneel down and she removed both of her shoes she stood on bare foot and prayed for more than 15 minutes in Yoruba. I don't know what she was saying. All I know is that there was a mantle. I returned with speed to Zaria and I said, my people, I came with an anointing. Stand up. Let me release something upon you first. Hear me. Your possibilities are defined by the mantles that are upon you. One day, a man of God prayed for me and he said, Son, because of this apostolic grace upon your life, I impart upon you. I never knew there was such a grace. He said, I impart upon you the kingmaker anointing. You've heard me say it. Kingmakers never become the kings themselves, but they can enthrone and dethrone kings. So you can stand and speak over an ordinary man and say, May God lift you. And that grace would defy anything and place that person there. It's a grace. Number one, honor. Number two, service slash support. The second key for receiving from fathers is there must be a track record of service or supporting what they represent. Genesis 30, when you read from verse 26 to 30, Genesis 30. Let's read very quickly. We're about to pray. Give me my wives, he said, Jacob now in the house of Laban, and my children for whom I have served thee, and let me go. For thou knowest my service, which I have done unto you. Next verse. And Laban said unto him, listen carefully, pray thee, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry ye, for I have learned by experience that the Lord had blessed me for thy sake. Isaac went to the house of Laban and turned things around. And he said, appoint me my wages. Keep the scripture there. And I will give it. We are reading to 30, 29. And he said unto him, thou knowest how I have served thee and how thy cattle was with me. 30. Hmm. For it was little which thou hast before I came. And it is now increased unto a multitude. And the Lord had blessed thee since my coming. 
and now when shall I provide for my own household also listen when you carry mantles upon your head there are people who will give you jobs not because of any physical effort like Laban they would have studied that anywhere this man sits down have you noticed that this man came into this business have you noticed that this man got a job into this parastatal and things began to change it is not always about physical work read your bible the spiritual climates that you carry can define possibilities in your life so you can hear people come and give you testimonies here they are not stage managing it we fear god how does someone just come and sit down and then by a week later his life just changes the same way your life too is about to change this night redefining inheritance now you know what an inheritance is now let me tell you this the final thing I'll tell you is this fans don't receive inheritance supporters don't receive inheritance inheritance is for those who are connected genuinely by blood by covenant by revelation let me repeat inheritance is for those who are connected genuinely by blood by covenant by revelation only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end hear me i'm about to pray please believe me when i tell you life does not have to be this hard it is the bankruptcy of something on your head you have not received some of you probably if you've been part of this vision for up to one year and your life is not producing any results check your life there is something you are missing believe me believe me there is the covenant of his presence that can bring you've heard me say it that i entered a covenant with god that i would never meet a person twice for that person's life to change you cannot come if you come to sit down here as a fan unfortunately or supporters club or well wishers it has to be a covenant revelation lord i believe lord i believe that something can come upon my life in spite of my background my lowly estate i believe that this wealth and finance thing can be settled once and for all I believe you can, you are the God of portions you can give me portions even in a strange land I believe as a man of God that something can step upon my life and ministry will no longer be a desert land I believe as a politician that I can carry a mantle that can fight for me at the gates in the next two minutes I'm going to allow you with the Lord every dimension that you need to step into i will leave you in prayer for the next two minutes please i want you to cry from the depth of your heart for some of us is poverty you need to end once and for all for god's sake for some of us is weakness and limitation politicians this may be your chance to access superior grace that produces results businessmen here can be your chance to rise there are young men and young women saying apostle physically speaking i don't have any advantage but the god of heaven can help you pray our global family following online pray in the name of Jesus
Mantles have been given to the church. Have been given Satellas to the church. Have been given to the church. Anointings have been given to the church. Mandates have been given to the church. For the kings to be born, the mantles to return. Hear me, please. Listen. Listen. Please listen. Listen. You've heard people come and stand here, and everybody will tell you they listen to this message, this grace called favor. I told you my story how that Esther anointing and that favor came upon my life for some reason it is one of the hardest graces upon my life that I've seen people receive I don't know why it's easy for people to receive the prophetic receive the healing anointing but I don't know what is it about this mantle for favor that has been very difficult and yet I submit to you by God that if you do not access the genuine anointing help them please the grace for favor there are many things you cannot do in your life this world is a cruel and a wicked world i would never be able to do what god is doing across the globe today outside of the favor of god as i will tell you there are many things i do not know I'm a student myself I learn and continue to learn I learn from the Holy Spirit I learn from Scripture I learn from our fathers I learn from people with proven track record but I can tell you one thing that I understand I understand the dynamics of favor believe me when I tell you I know what it takes to compel systems and structures to open for you among the many graces you may desire as I give you one minute again to pray I want you to cry for this grace called favor Lord let it come upon my life by your mercy Yeah. 
my life must change 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 The smell of my son is like the field that the Lord had blessed. One more minute, I'm about to speak over your life. Tonight will be one service that you will not forget in a hurry. Hallelujah. 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 There are people what you need to receive is the conviction of every great man that you admire. The first inheritance that you need. Study their mindset, their beliefs their convictions number two for some of you you need the leverage of the name a compendium of the credibility the track record the value the contribution and the honor that has been accorded that name for some of you what you need are the strategic relationships and connections that provide you a leverage for your work with God for ministry for business for your career your pursuit for some of you in all honesty what you need is physical support that push could be financial could be in terms of physical estates businesses or whatever it is but for everybody here this one is not some. I can tell you this last dimension. There is a mantle. There are graces. Behind the exploits that you see in business. Behind the exploits that you see in ministry. Behind the exploits that you see in politics and governance. Behind the exploits that you see in career. More than all the physical things whether diabolically or genuinely by the holy spirit any extraordinary physical result has a spiritual component that sponsors it unfortunately many have gone diabolic but with the dignity of kingdom integrity you can stand in partnership with scripture and the holy spirit it takes more than being gifted to excel your gift must be anointed there are many gifted people who remain empty. There are many great people whose voices remain silenced because the requisite level of grace is not there. I want to speak over your life. You don't have to kneel or do whatever. Just, just stand with understanding. I came here from the depth of my heart tonight. This is part one. Part two will be on Saturday during the broadcast. Don't miss it. Call your families and call everybody to connect by faith. Listen, I wish I were not the one doing this. If you look at me physically, there is nothing in this man physically. You would be mistaken. I am not that special as a person. However, that the excellency of power may be on us. Ordinary men. Ordinary men helped by a mighty God ordinary men not as intelligent as necessary not as eloquent not even as visionary as necessary but when that mighty God comes to protect you and invest his jealousy upon your life your life becomes nothing short of a sign and a wonder who am I your mind is so full of me, mortal man. 
in the name of Jesus I decree and declare by the power that raised Christ from the dead hear me everything that has tied you that came from your physical paternity limitations that came from your biological father biological mother or your physical territory I stand by the honor and the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic I break you from it now help them please I break you from it now I break you from it now I break you from it now every spirit that makes easy things difficult you saw this with your father you saw this with your mother you saw this with your siblings sincerely you have not been able to break through in the name of Jesus I come by the rod of the higher priesthood and I declare in the name of Jesus I push you to the next season of destiny help that man please in the name of Jesus Christ hear me everything that has covered your glory so that you are covered nothing about you can be seen by the power that raised Christ from the dead I tear that veil right now hear me where your physical father cost you I stand by priesthood to bless you anyone by your physical descent who said it will not be well with you I stand by the privilege of the apostolic call I reverse that statement 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 anyone who said it will not be well with you in the name of Jesus by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic I veto that statement and I cancel it please pay attention don't be distracted the spirit that insists that you must remain poor and beggarly in spite of your hard work in spite of educational qualification or you rise up and then you go down some of you see good things but you never lay hold of it in the name of Jesus and by the power of the prophetic I decree and declare between now and the next three months step into prepared blessings 90 days if I be a servant of God I stand by this apostolic mantle in the next three months step into prepared blessings jobs you did not apply for houses you did not build I speak this by the God who called me hear me every inherited battle they fought your father to his grave they fought your mother to his grave now they will not give you peace I help them please in the name of Jesus now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace always and by all means always and by all means inherited financial battles inherited family battles inherited career battles they come to an end now two more prayers and we're done my God I wish God could open your eyes to see what is happening in this place I'm hearing the month of August 
that there are people between now and August. Hear me. Between now and August, I stand by Pakatos Katia. Help the help her, please, so she doesn't injure herself. What could not be done throughout 2020, throughout 2021, and even till now, in the name of Jesus, I declare between now and August, step into it. Step into it. Step up, Pakatos. Step into it. Let me prophesy recovery. You have lost money. You have lost friends. You have lost opportunities. You have lost relationships. You mishandled favorable opportunities and it slipped your hand. Is there hope for a tree even if it be cut short? The Bible says at the scent of water, I want to speak over your life. In the name of Jesus, I have been commanded to bless therefore i decree and declare everything that has left your life and is not by divine orchestration i call it back now finances be restored relationships be restored spiritual fire be restored In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now hear me. Every parent here, physical parent now, who is struggling with your child in one area, it looks like the devil wants to wage war over your family. And some of you have been depressed asking, Lord, is this how I'm going to die? no responsible child to rise up some of you even the child the devil is fighting to make sure you don't even have the child in the name of jesus i'm speaking to our global family first and then to the body of christ no one connected to this grace will have a cause to regret over their children therefore by this prophetic word we release ministering spirits to homes, to schools, everywhere your child is. In the name of Jesus, may they come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. May they be transformed. May they become responsible children. In the name of Jesus Christ, please wave your hands to Jesus and give him all the praise. Amen. Amen. We've been commanded to bless, it cannot be reversed. Amen. Amen. One more time. Let me encourage every parent if God can grant you grace I know it is not easy but if God can grant you grace use this week and speak over your children men you are the priest over your home while your wife and children are sleeping get up in the night praying in tongues and walking around the house laying hands on them tell them don't worry I'm praying for you you just keep sleeping and take authority over the spiritual climate of your family stand like the priest that you are and say satan thus far have you come i have drawn a line over this family you have no business over my wife my children my husband and so on and so forth in the name of jesus christ for someone your season of shame and reproach has come to an end finally in the name of jesus christ now please listen very carefully there are people here who are saying apostle i need jesus there's no need wasting your time 
let's minimize movement please don't sit just stand we're done I need Jesus now and I need Jesus fast the greatest inheritance that you can have for the believer is the life of God the life of God being imparted to your human spirit main auditorium all of the overflows outside following online you need Jesus number one or you need to rededicate your life you're saying apostle I truly have given my heart to Jesus but I need to rededicate my life I'm going to give you two minutes wherever you are with every sense of love and responsibility as I count one to five I like you to quickly run and come and stand in front let's honor them as they come are you coming two I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Come bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour. Keep coming. God bless you. Come bless me now, my Savior. Three, I'm about to pray. If you are coming, please join them. Unashamedly, do not be ashamed. Do not be afraid. This is home. This is family. Come. Apostle, I'm not sure if I'm saved or not. Can I come? Absolutely. Come. Join them. There is such a thing as the assurance of salvation. Come to Jesus. Please help those under the anointing. Thank you. Hallelujah. Now, please look at me, those of you in front here and all the overflows and those watching either live by way of television or the internet or you're watching a rebroadcast. Here is an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of your life. Please do not play with this Jesus issue. We are not playing church or religion here. Your eternal destiny depends on this singular decision. Hallelujah. You want to make Jesus Lord of your life? As I lead these precious ones in prayer, I want you to join with your heart full of faith, knowing that he's right here with you in your room, your office, wherever it is that you're connecting from. Thank you all of you for making this decision. The Bible declares that as many who will come to him that he will in no wise cast away. May I please request that you lift your right hand high above your head as a sign of surrender. And you say this after me loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification right now i receive you into my heart as my savior as my lord and as my king i declare that the power of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight and forever I am a child of God, washed by the blood of the Lamb. I go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name I pray. Please keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you. You always do this to bring glory to Jesus. And I thank you for drawing these our brothers and sisters, young and old alike, to Jesus. Thank you for the power of the cross. In the name of Jesus and by the authority of Scripture, I decree and declare that according to your confession, I declare your sins forgiven. And I declare that the power of sin, my God, Satan, hell, and the grave, I'm seeing the power of God come on two of you who are in front here right now. I declare it broken right now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I decree and declare that from tonight, you walk in the newness of life. Eternal life is imparted into your spirit. I commend you to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of the word. Be grounded and established in righteousness. You go forward ever 
and backward never for in jesus name i pray amen and amen now may i request that you move to my right there are counselors waving their hands they'll have a word with you very quickly and then you'll be back to your seats let's honor them as they go koinonia is this the best you can do just guide those under the anointing but let's celebrate them until they are done hallelujah thank you for your patience one more time let me please remind you thank you let me remind you of the saturday broadcast all the workers you are invited you have the uh, permission to be here on ground hall one that's the hall we're using um, you'll be guided by your heads of department in the course of the week the broadcast will start 10 30 on the dot with worship we'll have some time of worship and then um just sharing my heart and speaking over our global family and as many who are connected so please do well everyone make it a date um, with us and then for those who are yet to signify their locations remember again hashtag koinonia global your location the lord bless and honor you in the name of jesus that by this time on sunday you will return with tears on testimonies Please rise up on your feet. Thank you very much. Again, we thank all our international guests. I want to take this moment to really say thank you. May the Lord bless you and the Lord increase you. And then for all who are worshiping for the first time, I know that um, you were acknowledged in the course of the service, but let me do this on behalf of Jesus himself, the apostle of the church. We love you. We thank you for taking the time to come. Let it be for you from glory to glory in jesus name after the grace i'd like you to hug 10 or 20 people and tell them i have an inheritance hallelujah the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore thanks for watching revival time hub but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.